Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, a report says Congress fails airline passengers. It's claimed to be the world's largest aircraft and it flies. Lasers and drones could factor into terrorist attacks. I'm Brie Cross, it's August 19th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. FlyersRights.org has released a comprehensive airline passenger report card for all 535 members of Congress. Paul Hudson, the president of FlyersRights.org and a member of the FAA Aviation Rulemaking Advisory Committee, noted, quote, the very low scores and low grades will come as no surprise to millions of American air travelers. Many members on both sides of the aisle received failing grades. The organization that claims to speak for air travel consumers measured congressional efforts in protecting airline passenger rights over the past eight years. It used 10 criteria, including voting records, bills sponsored, and money accepted from the airline industry. Out of over 100 possible points, they claim the average letter grade was a D for poor. Mr. Hudson further stated in part, quote, It is important for the public and voters to be aware of and hold members of Congress accountable for their slow responses and downright refusal to address the frustrations of airline passengers. Full details of their report card can be found on the FlyersRights.org website. A unique new aircraft that is a combination of lighter-than-air airplane and helicopter has been in the works for a number of years. Now it finally has made its first flight on Wednesday, and it's making the claim that it is the largest aircraft ever to fly. According to the company, the Airlander 10 successfully completed its first flight and that all objectives of the planned flight were accomplished. Airlander 10 took off from the historic Cardington Airfield in Bedfordshire, England in the late evening and then safely landed after a short 19-minute flight. It's reported the two test pilots were ecstatic about the flight and the flight performance of the Airlander during its time in the air. The company says the first flight of the Airlander 10 marks the commencement of its flight test program, which is expected to last a number of months. After this, the aircraft will begin a series of trials and demonstrations with prospective customers. It's claimed the Airlander 10 can remain aloft for extended periods of time, carry heavy loads, and it has the ability of maintaining a stable hover. It's a fascinating aircraft and will keep you posted on its continued testing. After the break, high technology can be used in terror attacks. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at news.net. A newly published report by the Israel-based Institute for Counterterrorism identifies UAVs, lasers, and radicalized airport employees who remain unidentified by law enforcement as the biggest terrorism threats to aviation. The 21-page report identifies multiple potential terrorism threats, but it particularly focuses on drones as one of the newest technologies that terrorists believe can be used to create aviation terrorism. The report says that drones could be used to carry explosives to attack an aircraft and have already been used in an intelligence gathering capacity by terrorist organizations. The report says that while there has not been any real damage caused by laser attacks on aircraft, the possibility cannot be ignored that terrorist organizations will use laser beams against pilots in order to carry out a terror attack. Regarding airport employees, the report stated in part, quote, There has been an increase in the number of incidents in which deficiencies in the employment process were found. The report indicated that a comprehensive approach is needed to address all security needs. It's Friday, and that means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. Jim says that Oshkosh was really great this year, but he adds that it's sad to see there are still some snake oil salesmen in the aviation business. He admonishes, sometimes we have to fight for the truth. Here's this week's barnstorming. Well, Oshkosh is now several weeks in the rearview mirror, and we're all starting to kind of catch our breath and figuring out all the stuff we've got to do next. And the list is huge, and we have some extraordinary announcements coming for you in the next few weeks because... 
we used Oshkosh as a meeting place to put together a number of plans and missions and, frankly, some big ideas. And they all seem to have come about, but more on that later. The problem with all these great expectations is that it makes you notice some of the negatives a little bit more. And one of the things that really bothered us was the fact that this community that we love, this extraordinary Oshkosh experience, these this family of aviators, the, the men, the women, the kids who are dreaming great dreams and all the people who bring this together, well, they deserve better than some of the things we saw. Thankfully, not a lot of it, but some of the things we saw. Icon is still running around telling people that they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. And Flying Magazine is giving them yet another editor's choice. And some of the other publications are now covering them. And, well, Kirk Hawkins has an excuse for this and an excuse for that. But as of this very day, they're still trying to put out ads telling people they've been producing aircraft since July of 2015. Oh, really? Because the only aircraft they supposedly produced and tried to give to EAA, well, that never got delivered. And EAA had so little confidence in auctioning the thing off, they turned it down. What's that tell you? EA could have made an easy two, three hundred thousand dollars, whatever it would have brought, but instead of selling out, they were sold on their own integrity, and they decided not to do business with them—at least not now and under these conditions. Yay for EAA, but shame on Icon. And Cirrus is still parading around like they're the greatest thing ever. They are selling a lot of airplanes. The reason they're selling a lot of airplanes is because Alan Klapmeyer left the company with an extraordinary design and a mission plan for several years that they're still working on that gave the Cirrus group something to grow on. Dale didn't like the jet. Dale didn't even like the parachute. But now they're crowing about all the, the wonderful things that they foresaw. And they're getting awards because Cirrus was such a visionary. Cirrus wasn't a visionary. Alan Klapmeyer was a visionary. Dale Klapmeyer was just along for the ride from everything I saw. And mind you, I've known these guys for decades. Flat out, there is a dishonesty in taking credit for the work of others. There is a dishonesty in telling people things are great when they're not. If ICON were to come up and say, look, we got problems, we're trying to get things fixed and deal honestly with the people, it'd be a whole, a whole different story. If Cirrus would come up and say, hey, we screwed up and we did a bunch of bad things and we're going to make them right and be better for the future of aviation, it would be a different ball game. And there's a bunch of little problems right now. Seattle Avionics just acted up and pulled a stunt again just in the last few days. And there's a bunch of other things. We deserve so much better because we are, as a community, so much better. And as long as we allow this kind of nonsense within our ranks, then this community cannot be all that it can be. We deserve honesty. We deserve the truth. We deserve fair dealing. We deserve to be treated as good people by good people, and the bad people can go find another industry. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, hoping for something better for us all. After these messages, the NTSB says a heart attack likely caused an accident. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The NTSB probable cause report of a Piper Malibu accident from August 2015 in which all four occupants of the aircraft were killed has been released. The pilot's autopsy revealed that he had severe coronary artery disease which could have caused his impairment during the flight. Xtreme has just revealed the latest additions to its line of remote control toys which are the Sky Ranger video drone, Fly Eye video drone and Raptor Eye video drone. Each of these drones is equipped with a Wi-Fi 720 HD detachable camera. Airlines for America is forecasting that 15.6 million passengers will fly in scheduled service on U.S. airlines over the Labor Day holiday period. This is a 4% increase over last year and will represent 2.4 million seats per day. 
U.S. Customs and Border Protection Commissioner R. Gail Karaweski will speak at MBAA's Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition in Orlando, Florida on November 1st through the 3rd. The event will feature other notable speakers, which include David McCullough, author of the book The Wright Brothers. Continental Motors Group will consolidate all manufacturing operations into its advanced manufacturing centers located in Alabama and Germany, the company announced Wednesday. The company says this will allow better utilization of the technical capabilities and the facilities at these locations. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. A UAV operator assisted the Salt Lake County, Utah Sheriff last week with a search and rescue operation as searchers were about to call off their efforts because of nightfall. Television station KUTV reports that a recreational drone operator was flying his UAV at the canyon when he approached the search team and offered his assistance. Crews were searching for a 17-year-old who went missing while hiking with his family at the canyon. The search had been ongoing for a few days. The UAV flyer was able to fly his drone into the canyon where a helicopter could not go and within a few minutes located what was unfortunately the body of the missing youth. Sheriff Jim Winder says the incident illustrates the usefulness of small aircraft in such situations. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend. We will see you Monday.